Welcome back to TV Heaven. Once again, it's time for familiar names to run for cover as we ponder where were they? Benson, boy, we're free. No, no, not yet. What do you mean? It works out, doesn't it? Oh. Everything's just like you said. There's a long way to go get boiled. Come on, there's the shed. You've got to know how to look after people, do you know? You've got to know all their weak points. And when you know their weak points, they always do what they're told. It always works. I guess so. You guess so. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be in London tomorrow night. So I'll tell you why we're going to be in London tomorrow night. We've got money, right? We got ourselves a car. And this. A very fresh-faced John Hurt there, on the run from justice in an episode of Gideon's Way. See if you can uncover some more famous faces lurking in our bumper pack of commercials from 1965. There were seven of us. Thousands have tried before. This is where they left their bones. We knew what was waiting. We knew what was waiting for us. <coughs> the sea witches. The Greeks knew about them. The faces of mortal women. But their hair. Their hair is legend. Was this the real location of Eden? Were these the vanished descendants of Eve? There were seven of us. Men with no hope, only courage. This is what we were after. The hair colors of Sea Witch. Semi-permanent, simple to use. Twelve colors. There's one for you. At your chemist. Four and eleven pence. Double Diamond, the beer the men drink. Double Diamond, the beer the men drink. Double Diamond. Amber bright, plenty of body. Double Diamond, the beer the men drink. Tina's not the best dart player in the world, but she enjoys the game while she's waiting for me. After a match, we often meet our wife for a quiet drink in the local. It's a nice, friendly place. Tina reckons I'd rig the dart. <laughs> it's not true. Anyway, it's great to get together for an evening out. Like Mr. and Mrs. Bobby Moore, looking at the local. Flake. Cadbury's Flake. Cadbury's Flake. Sixpence worth of heaven. A slimming diet with delicious nimble bread. Nimble is for girls like this. At their best in bikinis, fit and slim, nimble and neat. Nimble is for girls who love their bread and know that if they keep to a proper calorie-controlled diet, then the light, light, lighter slices of Nimble will help keep them slim and Nimble neat. Make Nimble part of your slimming diet. Slice for slice, Nimble has fewer calories than ordinary bread.
These are the hands of a liquid draft handmaiden, and they may be ringing at your front door with exciting prizes worth 14 pounds. With new liquid draft for dishes on hand, you can win a real Wedgwood Bone China tea service, 20 pieces plus teapot, or this stainless steel prestige pan set with special aluminium clad bases suitable for any cooker, or a 42 piece Atlas cutlery set in Firth Stabrite stainless steel, guaranteed for 20 years. If the handmaidens call, just show liquid draft, answer her question correctly, and win a prize worth 14 pounds. Have liquid draft on hand in case the handmaidens call. These are the cars. Win five pounds. These are the girls. Win five pounds. The Persil girls. Win five pounds. Looking for Persil. Win five pounds. Powder or liquid. Win five pounds. Answer a question. Win five pounds. Powder alone. Win five pounds. Liquid alone. Win five pounds. But have them together. You double your money. Powder and liquid. Double your money. One powder, one liquid. Win 20 pounds. Two powders, one liquid. Win 30 pounds. One powder, two liquids. Win 30 pounds. She's won 30 pounds. Powder and liquid. Double your money. Buy both Persils. Double your money. You can win 30 pounds. Go and buy Persil powder and liquid. Now. Now that's what I call a proper cup of tea. Lion's Green Label. The Ranny for Kellogg's. You know, I've been looking for the perfect word to describe the world's favorite cereal. Kellogg's cornflakes. I looked in Webster's Dictionary. I looked in Oxford Intercollegiate. Not so I dipped into the real thing. And the word came to me in a flash. Ultra tasty flavoring. Then pour a bowl of Kellogg gave it. Hunger pang faded in the morn. Hyphen. Extra crispy activated. Crunch a bunch of flake rated. Appetizer lish rated corn. What a perfect way to describe those golden originals from Kellogg's. I wish I had a time to give you more than just the abbreviation. Extra crispy activated. Crunch a bunch of flake rated. Appetizer lish rated corn. I hope it fits on the package. One of the most consistently popular formulas for a teledrama series has been watching various experts getting on with their jobs, drawing us into their worlds. In the Human Jungle series, the expert was a Harley Street psychiatrist, Dr. Corder, played by Herbert Lom, loping around looking like Charles Boyer's younger and more serious brother. This was before Lom himself became a suitable case for treatment in the string of Pink Panther films. Each week, Dr. Corder tells us about some patient he's cured of a particularly complex complex. In our episode, Joan Collins acts her socks off. And not only her socks. After the break, the unlikely combination of ballerina Lynn Seymour and the even suppler Tom Jones. In 1961, ABC had introduced the arts programme Tempo to ITV as a response to the BBC's flagship Monitor. And Tempo flourished under Ken Tynan, who introduced and edited the series. As a point of interest, 1965 was the year that earned Tynan special notoriety as the first person to utter the F word on British television, which he managed to get in doing an interview about theatre censorship in the satire programme BBC Three. As an example of Tempo's diverse approach to covering the lively arts, our final programme is an all-singing and all-dancing edition of the series in which two contemporary talents are contrasted. The up-and-coming ballerina, Lynn Seymour, and young Welsh pop singer, Tom Jones. Oscar Wilde once said ironically of Sir John Irving, who developed an odd walk for use on stage, his left leg is a poem. If Oscar had been alive in 1965, he might well have said of Tom Jones, his pelvis is a Nordic saga. Well, that's about it for 1965. Next week, we travel forward to 1971 for a date with Ronnie Bach, a first trip upstairs, downstairs, and then off to the Riviera with Roger Moore and Tony Curtis in the bus. But for now, to introduce our customary musical offering, I'll leave you in Huey Green's capable hands as we find out for whom opportunity knocks. Good night.
have, have, have the boys ever played uh, before anybody important? They played for Princess Margaret, not Snowden. Have they really? Indeed, well, that's yes. most interesting. That's yes, wonderful. Yes, and right. let me ask you this, sir. Uh, where do they actually come from? Do they come St. from... St. Kitts and Leeward Island. St. Kitts and Leeward Island? Yes. But they live in Leeds in now? In Leeds now, yes. Are they professional? Just started this year. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with a homemade band. The boys made the instruments themselves from Leeds, but actually from St. Kitts in the West Indies, the Caribbean all steel band for whom opportunity knocks. Sean Day-Lewis has written a history of television programmes to accompany TV Heaven. The fully illustrated booklet is available by sending a cheque or postal order for £4.95, payable to Channel 4, to TV Heaven, P.O. Box 4000, London W3 6XJ. <laughs>